Thank you for taking this vision to where we are today because you've worked incredibly hard. And it's been such a pleasure to work with you and, and the colleagues on the, the leadership team um, to make this, this you know, in the beautiful day it's, it's been today. And indeed, this is just the beginning of a journey that we're going to be taking together. And I couldn't be happier. I think this has been an absolutely fantastic success. And yeah, I just can't see how this won't go forward. There's such a momentum and everybody here, as I said before, we're all doers. We all want to, to do things. We're not here just to talk and feel inspired. We're, we're already thinking about the next steps. So we will take many, many next steps. And I, I have no doubt that this actually will have been a historic day that's in 10 years or whenever we look back, we say, yeah, this is where it started um, in Leeds on the 17th of November. So I've been thinking as I was preparing for these last few minutes that I have, I won't need the whole half hour, so we'll be able to have the nice drinks reception and continue with the, all the, the individual conversations, which I think have been just as important as the plenaries and the breakout sessions, as is often the case in meetings like this. So I've been thinking about what, what I'm going to say to wrap this up. And of course, it's impossible. And there have been so many inspirational words already. I really need to know about the pond, the water, the ship and the elephant. Or not. Or I can just think, I'm just going to build this into a narrative that I find inspiring. And maybe it's completely different to what Gino had in mind. But that's, yeah, I think that's the beauty of meetings like this. But anyway, for me, it's always useful to think about, oops, sorry, about the, the why, the how and the what. And I think we've talked a lot about the why. And if I want to wrap it up in a sort of a, a meta why for the day, I think there are two things that, are, that come to mind. And one, one not unimportant one is the sense that I think we all share that as universities, as knowledge producers, we can't go on this way. It's, in, it's just not the way we want to be. It's making us far too miserable. It's making us ineffective. And I think that's a really good driver, also in our personal lives. And you know, when we reach the point in our lives where we feel like we can't go on, that's often the point where roads open up, where you're driven, forced almost by life to make some really big changes. And I don't know how it is for you, but the times that in my life when I reach that point thinking I can't go on like this, when I've made some radical changes, they've always been good looking back um, at the changes I've made, difficult though they may have been. There's never been a period like that in my life that I've regretted afterwards. So I think we, we really should heed that sense that we all have. We can't go on like this. And as I said this morning, we've created this situation ourselves so we can also uncreate it. So for me, that's a very important why. And the more um, inspirational global why, of course, is that we can absolutely change the world. So that sense of purpose, that is so incredibly important. And we, I think we all feel it, we share it. I think we, we all phrase it differently, probably, you know, elephants or ponds or, or other things. But I, I think they're all, we all have that, that very clear sense of, of our combined collaborative purpose. And I think that why question that we often forget to ask, and um, we're answering it beautifully and we've done a great job today. So then the how, of course, is collaboration, is relentless collaboration, is thinking about networks of networks, thinking really big and, and just in the, in the quite sort of detailed ideas that have come through all the workshops. It's very clear that we have really good sense of what that could look like. So I think Samantha and Abby and Tim and Emma gave us some great examples there. I just scribbled some things quickly, but they're all wonderful. The pooling of resources within Ken, that's great. I mean, none of those things I had thought about before, which is why it's so important to have all these great minds together here today. Funding teams, not projects. The idea of storytelling, the diverse, uh, diverse sources of knowledge. We can't underestimate the power of stories, and we've heard quite a few here today. The demystifying of knowledge, uh, partnership with publishers, whoa, that's quite a, that's really scary actually, but why not? Why not? I think we can actually, we could do that. Who's in the room? Who was in this room today? Who was not in this room today? How do we include more people? But how do we do it in a way that's actually meaningful, that also uses their time and energy successfully? Who's, who's them? Who's us? Those are all really, really big questions. Students clearly need to be much more involved. Um, I think we knew that before today and will absolutely do that. I think the leading by example was something that was mentioned just now. And that's 
maybe that is, is one of our, our, our big drivers, one of our big mottos we need to think about. Because we need to start with ourselves, with our own persons, how, who we are, what are our values, how do we want to lead our personal lives, our work lives, but also as, with us as institutions, everything we want to do on a global scale, if we can't do it in our own universities, in our own teams, we have no fighting chance of bringing it to a global level. There was a really interesting question just now. If you help, do others, the people you help, owe you something? I thought that was a brilliant question. My intuitive answer is no, but I think it's a question to chew over and think about. And, and I think implicitly we often expect people to owe us something if we help them. Yeah, so, so lots and lots of things to think about. And th those were just the scribbles from the last 15 minutes. And then I have a few scribbles from during lunchtime. Um, for me, one really important um, thing that came through, I think it was Don who said it, is we, we shouldn't be fearful. No more fear. Let's please move away from being so afraid. And if we get to know each other better as institutions, as teams, as persons, I think we'll start realizing how much of what we do is fear-based, even if we're unaware of it, and facing our fears and <coughs> recognizing our fears and recognizing how they drive the often much less much, no, no, not very, let me free phrase, not very helpful actions that we undertake, but how normal it is and how, how we've all grown up with that and, 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 and sort of got it used to doing a lot of things based on fear. So I think we'll need to work really hard not to be driven by fear, by competition, by chaos, which will easily start if we're driven by fear and competition, by fighting, by the need to dominate, by anger. Those are so ingrained in our societies, in the way we, we treat each other. We don't need to work very hard to, to get into that mode. And it will be a lot of really hard, strategic, focused work to look at the other side of the coin and go instead of fear to faith, instead of competition to collaboration instead of chaos to calm, instead of fighting to peace, instead of dominance to equity, and instead of anger to acceptance. And that is the work that I think is, is cut out for us now. And it will be more difficult than the other things which are, have come so naturally to us and are so abundant in academia and are so part of the norm of our behavior. And that's why we need to be really aware, because constantly, every time we feel ourselves go into that mode, we need to pull ourselves back and realize that, that we can't change the world, we can't find our own inner peace if we're, we're, we're giving in to those impulses that come so easily to us. What's also become really clear today, that in academia and universities, we're so much more similar than we are different. It almost doesn't matter whether we're in South Africa or in New Zealand or in Leeds <coughs> or in Utrecht or wherever people come from, Sudan. And that's because humanity, of course, is so much more similar than we are different. But it's so easy for us to see our differences and not feel our similarities, which brings me back to the point I made before. If we're in our fear mode, we see the differences and we don't see the similarities. And I think as, as humanity, as people, as institutions, we're, we're really confused about what will make us happy. If we take a step back, why do we think that we'll be more happy as universities if we go up in the ranking? Do we really believe that? But, but yeah, we all, we all think that that's really the case. We all have supervisory boards and councils who, if we're not careful, tell us that the big strategic goal is to go up in the rankings. And they think that that's the way for them to be happy. And of course, we'll be happy for a few days. I mean, I think if Leeds would go up in some ranking, it would be hard for me not to be a little bit happy. Maybe not after today. I don't think I would say it, but <laughs> no, it's, it's hard not to feel like, yeah, that, that can't be a bad thing. But how long does, it, does that happiness last? It won't last very long. And then, of course, it gets replaced with unhappiness because the, the, the higher you go, the more you have to defend. So these rankings make no one happy, even the people at the top, because then there's only one way and that's down. So just thinking about why we think that the things we're doing will make us happy and realizing that they won't. And it's very short term if we're even happy. And then quickly it becomes very addictive because you have, you have to do more. If you've published a few papers one particular year, then next year you have to publish more because otherwise you won't be happy. And we don't even realize that it doesn't make us happy at all. And of course what we need to put in place is that sense of purpose. 
a sense of together being able to actually do things that are bigger than ourselves, but also a sense of acceptance of life, acceptance of things not being perfect, acceptance of hardship, acceptance of, of difficulties. And if, if we can do that, if we can stop fighting and sort of going with the change that's part of humanity and of life, we can be so much more successful, and successful in the new definition of the word, clearly. And another thing I wanted to share with you, that it's become very clear to me in this job, in previous jobs, also again during today, um, that we're often in the mode of thinking that someone will come in and rescue us. And I have news for me and for you too, no one's coming. No one's coming to rescue us. We have to do it. We're, we need to be the change we want to see. And it may sound like bad news, like I really wish someone would come to rescue me. But of course it's also great because it, it alleviates us from being in the role of rescuing others. That's one thing I'm trying to tell my community here. I'm not going to be able to make you happy. And they may not like that, they may not want to hear it, but it's great, it's super liberating. I can't make them happy, just as much as I'm not making them unhappy. I'm pretty sure I don't make anybody unhappy. There could be things that may make them feel more trusting or make them feel more a sense of belonging at the university, all kinds of things that are worth striving for. But I, as a, as a person, am not making people unhappy and I also can't make them happy. So we need to be the change we want to see. And, and I think if we think of how to go forward and all the parties that we've identified today who are sort of in our way, whether it's publishers or governments or, or competitive colleagues, we need to be really careful not to descend into fighting mode without knowing it. So let's please not get the sense that we need to fight the publishers. Let's, let's start changing the rules. Let's draw a line in the sand. Let's say, no, we're no longer playing your game. We're not going to do all the things we've been doing in the last few decades. But let's not, let's not get into fighting, because I think fighting as a modus operandi, it makes us unhappy, it costs far too much energy, it doesn't make us savvy, it doesn't make us very strategic, and it doesn't mean we need to play by their rules. But fighting, I think, as, a, as an operative verb, is not what we want to do. We also shouldn't fight our govern governments. We just need to change the narrative around higher education and everything we can do and how we can help them with their political agenda. So that sense of pride and agency. We're wonderful institutions. We're, we're amazing. If you think of everything that universities have been doing on this planet for literally hundreds of years, that universities are doing today, whether we're research intensives or teaching focused, we're the backbone of society, we're the backbone of democracy. I don't remember, was it you who said that, Tawani? If you didn't say it, you probably meant it. We're, we're really, really important. If without universities, there is no democracy. So that sense of pride in what we're doing every day, what, what better workplace could there be than one where you know you're actually really making a difference for society? But we're not the heroes to fix other people. So it's, it's a fine line be, between feeling that sense of pride and feeling like we need to get on our horse and fix, fix everybody. We, we can't fix people, but we can invite them to come with us and fix themselves. So for that, and now I'm coming to the end, we need self-reflection. We need to recognize our own fears, our own instincts, our own impulses. And we need to go from that state of fear and chaos and fighting to a much better place of happiness and calm <clears throat> and focus and sense of purpose. And it will take a lot of work, it's not going to be easy, but we're in it together, we don't have to do it alone. And also from that place of humility where we recognize ourselves, we can also much more easily recognize others. So if we don't want othering, which I think is a really good thing to strive for when you think about community, humanity, we're all the same, we're all the same. If we don't want othering, recognizing the fear that we have in others will make us also feel a lot more accepting of behaviors that are unhelpful so that we don't need to demonize, we don't need to separate, we don't need to create that big chasm between us and, and others, whoever they are. So yeah, to, to end um, basically what I ended my presentation this morning with, let's, let's go from fear to faith, let's have faith in ourselves, in the future, in our ability to collaborate and in our ability to change the world. And thank you all for, for providing me and colleagues with such a, an amazing day today. I really couldn't have asked for anything more. And it's, I think it's the, actually the, the best day I've ever spent with a bunch of colleagues in my entire career in academia. 
And I just don't think we're stoppable. So I'm really looking forward to the next steps, the future, and to the drinks reception to, <laughs> to start our future. Thank you very much. Thank you.